Welcome to this beautiful game between Ding Liren and Levon Aronian and in which uh, Ding Liren ties up uh, Aronian's pieces on the queue inside allowing him to uh, go for an attack on the exposed king. So let's see how uh, Ding Liren who is the current world champion does that and Liren is playing with the white pieces here and uh, Levon is playing with the black pieces here. So the knight c3 makes this the queen's gambit and the slab defense three knights variation is being played. Uh, in response so pawn push to e3 and e6 is played uh, c5 in response pushing the pawn up and creating creating this nice little pawn structure on that uh, and knight to d7 is played and pawn is again pushed to b4 and pawn push to b6 attacking the pawn so bishop goes to b2 uh this bishop and after that pawn is again pushed to a5 attacking so the both these pawns are attacked now and this pawn is not defended so because of that the pawn is pushed to a3 supporting the pawn and bishop to e7 now allowing Arodin to castle on the king side so bishop to d3 by Liren and both the players now castles and bishop goes to a6 uh, attacking this very nice light square bishop which is already looking at this particular h7 pawn so knight drop backs to e1 here which allows you to push this f pawn and activate the rook into the game so bishop comes to c4 and uh, uh, then goes for the exchange of the bishop which creates this pawn over here and queen goes to e2 attacking the pawn and rook comes to b8 over here so best move would have been to capture this pawn uh, but Arundin didn't go for that and rook to a2 is played by Leren basically but the best move would have been to bring the uh, rook over here to b1 uh, was the uh, best move so b5 now supporting the pawn and uh, after which uh, b7 is played uh, and uh, rook comes to b7 again the best move would be to bring the rook back over here but b7 was played and knight comes to c2 and knight goes to b8 now so uh, rook drop backs to a1 and queen to c8 is played and rook now comes to d1 here uh, on this semi open uh, d file over here so uh, rook to d8 is played in, in in exchange and bishop comes to c1 and a knight jumps to a6 here so uh, bishop goes to f f4 now on this open dark square diagonal and uh, rook comes to uh, to d7 attacking this weak backward pawn over here so pawn push to h3 is played uh, here which creates a retreating square for the bishop and also allows a space for the king avoiding any background problems later on in the game and knight to e8 is played and uh, queen goes to e3 now so bishop comes to f6 here again attacking this pawn here thrice and it's already it's already defended thrice so pawn is now pushed to e5 attacking the bishop and the bishop goes to e7 and knight jumps to e4 over here so uh, you got this nice little outpost over here where you can uh, position your knight over here so if you bring your knight you'll be forced to capture it and if it's capture you can capture back with your pawn uh, like this and uh, you, both these rook will become inactive in the game so knight goes to c7 and this knight jumps to d6 and queen attacking the queen and the queen goes to a8 over here so queen to g3 is played keeping the queen against the black king and knight jumps to d5 and knight to e3 is played and knight goes and uh, to, to this c3 uh, c3 position here so uh, because if the knight comes here your queen will be gone so the rook had to come to e1 and uh, this is also a little bit more active square with the knight over here in the case of a capture you can capture back uh, with your pawn and this pawn won't have any immediate problems uh, pretty soon so bishop captures the d6 knight and the pawn captures back and a knight jumps to e4 now attacking the queen and the queen goes to h4 over here and a knight again goes to d2 now basically here uh, this uh, rook here is trapped so you will lose uh, learn will lose the rook but uh, he had other ideas and he plays knight to d5 over here so uh, here uh, uh, so basically this knight goes for the capture of this particular uh, rook and uh, he then uses that opportunity to bring the knight over here to b6 attacking the queen and the rook at the same time so once the queen moves away uh, he captures this knight and uh, uh, then knight comes to f6 here so here instead of um, uh, capturing uh, this particular you know uh, 
uh, rook uh, bishop to e5 is played and knight comes to d5 over here so here instead of going for the capture of the rook uh, this knight is captured in exchange and uh, once the pawn is captured back here uh, the bishop is sacrificed by Leran, uh, basically so bishop to g7 is is played so uh, one of the ideas is that this uh, all the pieces of black uh, are basically on the uh, queen side and because of the pawn over here this rook cannot come over here and is pretty much inactive uh, as well so uh, this pawn is also preventing this activity of these uh, rooks over here so once the bishop is sacrificed once the king captures the queen can go to g5 with a check and once the king moves away uh, to, uh, to the back rank position which basically uh, that's why uh, this check was so important once the, because the king going to the back rank prevents this rook from coming over here uh, creating any kind of protection for the uh, for the king over here so queen goes to f6 here so in the next move if the queen goes over here the game will be over because there won't be any space for the king to go because uh, this pawn covers this exit over here so the king is forced to move to g8 to prevent the checkmate and after the check the king moves to f8 and the queen go back again again to g8 and now the rook comes to e1 over here so here the pawn a pawn captures the b4 pawn and uh, rook goes to e5 over here again if you uh, get greedy and capture it the rook will come over here with a check and after the king moves here it will be uh, a checkmate so the pawn is pushed to h6 here preventing the rook from coming over here and after that the pawn the rook goes to h5 attacking the pawn and now uh, queen goes and captures the a3 pawn the best move here would be to capture this pawn actually with your uh, with your rook and because it's already up by a rook there's no uh, point because your king is under attack your pieces are not active and uh, you cannot uh, move this rook because uh, you know this this rook is hanging actually so uh, queen into uh, h6 is played and after that pawn is pushed to uh, f6 over here so here the queen captures the pawn a3 pawn again if you uh, basically at this position i don't understand the game because uh, after the uh, following moves uh, you are threatening checkmate if the rook goes over here the check it will be a checkmate so if the rook goes to g7 and try to protect the checkmate this rook will be gone and once the king goes here the checkmate will happen like this over here so because of that i don't resign as of this position so uh, positionally uh, even though he's a uh, rook up around in uh, there's no point because the king is pretty much exposed and uh, uh, all of black pieces are disoriented and it's not protecting the king which leads to uh, around its defeat and declarance victory in this match so that's it thanks for watching we'll be back with more such videos